we are going to talk about bad leadership. Now, some people occupy leadership positions, but it doesn't make them effective. It doesn't make them good. So we're going to look at Johnson and Hackman's book on leadership, a communication perspective for their point of view on what makes bad leadership and how you can spot it. By the way, I'm Alex Lyon, and I will be doing a whole bunch of videos on Johnson and Hackman's book, and you can find a link to their book in the description below this one. So let's get into the details now. Let's talk about bad leadership. So humans have a dark side. You probably know that, and leaders are not immune. Just because they are in a leadership position does not mean that they are 100% good. In fact, maybe they have stepped over some people to get there. So here are the qualities of bad leaders that you can be on the lookout for. Number one is selfishness. This doesn't really work very well if you are a leader because as a leader, you're supposed to be helping your followers accomplish the goals of the overall enterprise. And if this this activity becomes all about you as a leader and it's all about what you get out of it, then that's not going to work very well, not in the long run. It begins to become very obvious to the people around you that you're in this for yourself. The leadership position should not primarily benefit the leader. The leadership position should be a benefit to everybody reaching those bigger goals. Number two, cognitive errors. So sometimes poor decision-making and wrong thinking can be a negative. Some leaders make mistakes, and this can result in bad leadership. This will often happen. Sometimes they don't have the right information. Sometimes they're not catching on quickly enough because the situation has changed, but that's one of the aspects of bad leadership. Number three, environmental factors. So various types of contextual pressure can expose leaders' ineffectiveness or possible ethical issues. So environmental factors, that's another way of saying the context it doesn't mean the actual environment like the trees outside. It means the context, the environment that you're working in. Let's say something changes and it turns into a crisis situation and all of a sudden there's a lot more pressure. That may expose some weaknesses in that leader. Maybe they did okay when everything was calm, but they may not really respond that well when the situation has changed. It may show either their ineffectiveness or possibly expose some kind of ethical or moral failing on their part. Number four is incompetence. Sometimes leaders will get promoted, but then once they're in the position, it's too much for them. I've seen this happen at least on one occasion. Someone was promoted into a position because they did pretty well at the thing below them, and there are not a lot of people applying for this leadership position above but this person applied and they got promoted. But once they got there, it was really clear that they just did not have the skill set. And that made for very bad leadership and they eventually did lose that position. Number five, being rigid. So when you are in a leadership position, you're gonna be dealing with lots of change all the time and you can't be so set in your ways that you can't adapt. You have to be adaptable. And if you're too rigid and you just stick to something, regardless of what else is going on, that can really expose some, uh, some negative qualities. Number six is intemperate. So if you lack self-control, think of the word temper in there in the root, if you lack that self-control and you fly off the handle and you have a, a temper, that's going to turn people off. Sometimes leaders get away with it in the short run and certainly in certain contexts like coaches and in professional sports and other things. But I have noticed that eventually that will catch up with them. People just get tired of it and they will not put up with it. And, uh, you know, if you're winning games, people might look the other way for a little while in that temper. But boy, as soon as you... <laughs> stop winning games, they're going to call you on that temper. So you don't want to be in temper. You have to be in control of yourself. You have to learn how to take deep breaths, count to 10, sleep on it, and then come back the next day and handle it better. Number seven, callous. This is when people are uncaring, unkind, and insensitive. Naturally, if a leader is acting this way, we are going to see this as a bad leader. You know, leaders are held to a higher standard. I might be able to act up and have a bad attitude as an employee. And if I ask, let's say, a hostile question during a Q&A after a presentation, I might be able to get away with it temporarily as a follower, as an employee. But if the leader 
then acts the same way, if they snap and get nasty back at me, people will blame the leader. Even if we both acted in the same way, we both acted callous and uncaring and unkind and insensitive, they'll blame the leader rather than the person that asked the hard question. I've seen that a hundred times. Leaders are held to a higher standard and you have to be caring and kind and sensitive. Number eight is insular. You don't want to just put a wall around yourself and only care about you. And so when leaders do this, they have a disregard for the welfare of the people not immediately around them. They're in group, it's called. When, you, when leaders do this and they surround themselves with a circle, a very tight circle of individuals, and they don't care about other people, they don't, they don't include other people in discussions, that's a really bad sign of bad leadership and worse things are probably going to follow. And number nine, of course, uh, evil. Throughout the history of the world, some leaders have done horrific things. And maybe they even got into those leadership positions by doing horrific things. You know, maybe they used uh, violence and murder and war to take over a situation and become the official leader. It does Just because they're in that position doesn't make them a good leader. They could be a very bad leader. And I'm, I'm sure if you're a student of history at all, you're aware of at least some of them coming to mind right now. So those are some qualities of bad leaders that you can be on the lookout for. So question of the day, who comes to mind when you think of the history of bad leaders out there? Who have you read about in, in books and who have you heard about in school? I would love to hear some names that come to mind and I look forward to reading that and your comments in, the, in that section below the video. Take care and I will see you soon.